So you graduated college, landed your dream job, and got off to a great start by getting promoted a few times within the first few years of your professional career. But then everything slowed down to a halt. The promotion stopped, rewards weren't that good, and now you're left wondering where you went wrong. If this is you, you're not alone. Many software engineers have a very good career growth early on, but they eventually struggle to keep up with that progression. So in this video, I'll talk about seven things that can completely block your career growth and what you can do to break those barriers. I'll talk about some points that apply to new software engineers, as well as points that apply to experienced engineers. All right, let's get started. Hi folks, my name is Utsav. If you're new here, I'm a software engineer based in Seattle. I have about 20 years of experience in the industry where I've held diverse software engineering roles and created a few tech startups. And I'm currently at Microsoft. If you're new to this channel, my goal here is to help you get the best out of your career by mentoring you around five key pillars, technical skills, engineering efficiency, mindset, entrepreneurship, and financial freedom. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing and follow me at Engineering with Utsav for behind the scenes and monthly q and The number one advice I give to software engineers, especially if you're early in your career, is to find a good mentor. Mentorship plays a crucial role in your growth and development. Through a mentor, you can learn new skills, gain insights into the best practices, and enhance your knowledge in areas like coding and design. New software engineers benefit the most from having a mentor. With the help of a mentor, you can also quickly familiarize yourself with the company culture, its processes, and teamwork principles. This accelerates your onboarding process, enabling you to deliver higher quality code faster. And because you receive a lot of guidance on problem solving, code reviews, and best practices, you will also become more productive and produce higher quality work compared to non-mentored software engineers. Mentors can also provide insights into industry trends, technologies, and career paths. But mentorship isn't just about improving your technical skills. One of the key goals of mentorship is to ensure employee retention for the company. So good mentors also make the effort to understand your career goals and help you align them with the company's core objectives, essentially guiding you through your professional journey. You get emotional support, encouragement, and constructive feedback. This helps build your confidence. Getting mentorship is also a great way to build your network as your mentor will share their professional network with you and connect you to valuable people within the space. And finally, mentorship isn't limited to your tenure for the company or the team. Good mentor-mentee relationships last a lifetime, mutually benefiting both parties. So as a new software engineer, if you don't have a mentor already, finding one should be your top priority. Let me know in the comments below if you need tips and guidance on finding a good mentor. And also feel free to share stories of how your mentor helped you grow in your career. Curiosity is at the front and center of your career growth. This is true for all levels, but especially true if you're just starting in your career. Because as a new software engineer, there will be a lot of things that you will not understand, like various technologies, processes, and the culture. So it is very important to be open about what you don't know and ask a lot of questions. But the issue I see so frequently is that most new software engineers have imposter syndrome. If you don't know already, imposter syndrome is a psychological pattern where you doubt your skills, talents, and accomplishments, which leads to a persistent internalized fear of being exposed as someone who does not belong. This inhibits your natural curiosity, forcing you to limit yourself within your bubble, which feels your imposter syndrome even more. It's a vicious cycle. Just remember that even the most accomplished engineers have imposter syndrome. It has nothing to do with your accomplishments. So instead of dealing with it emotionally, just keep an open mind. It is okay to not know everything. No one knows everything. Focus on learning as much as possible. And when you do deliver, keep a track of your accomplishments to remind yourself of the things that you have done well. This will help curb any negative thoughts and over time your curiosity will take over. And even if it feels odd or difficult at first, don't feel bad about being curious. Ask a lot of questions and take notes and iterate this process to grow as much as possible. Remember that the only bad question is the one that never gets asked. Look, things can get hectic sometimes, your manager or your mentor can get busy and you're left with nothing to work on. This happens quite frequently and I keep seeing many new software engineers just sit and wait for someone to assign them something. 
Don't do this. Have a bias for action, which basically means that you should always prefer action over inaction. And even times where there is not much information available or what is available is very ambiguous, you should do something about it. Having a bias for action compels you to be proactive about gathering the missing pieces or disambiguating uh, what is available. Uh, this is a trait that is incredibly valuable as a software engineer. See, software engineering and tech in general is very fast paced, where acting swiftly is often way better than waiting for complete certainty. Innovation thrives when engineers take calculated risks and make decisions promptly. Not doing anything or the opposite, overthinking, often referred to as analysis paralysis, both yield lesser results compared to taking swift, educated decisions. Embracing action also fosters personal growth. Making mistakes is part of the learning process and being comfortable with making mistakes allows you to experiment and take ownership of your projects. So the next time you think that you don't have enough information or um, you don't have work to do, think about bias for action and do something to progress even with limited or no information. This will help you a lot on the long run. This point sort of builds on the previous point. While there are many resources like your manager and your mentor there to help you grow, ultimately your career growth is your responsibility. So you need to be very proactive about seeking growth opportunities. For example, at some point in your career, you'll have to start driving entire projects and act as a lead, whether that is just as a project lead or an engineering manager. But the opportunity to drive and lead isn't just going to magically appear on your lap. You will need to display enough evidence to your manager and others around you that you can lead. So the process of leading projects starts long before you actually get to lead the project officially. In the same way, promotions aren't going to magically happen. Your manager may promote you the first couple of times because you're so new, but eventually you will need to drive that conversation. So talk to your manager and explain your career goals. Sync with them on what is a reasonable timeline and map that out. Once the plan is set, do monthly check-ins to see if you're on track. And if not, your manager should give you advice on how you can improve. This will open up various growth opportunities that you should take and excel at. And every time you get promoted, make a roadmap for the next step in your career. Whether you are getting promoted or not should never come as a surprise during the review. So communication here is key. Think of it this way. You drive the growth of your career. Your manager, mentor, and peers are there to help you navigate that path smoothly. But ultimately, the responsibility is yours. Software engineering is one of those fields where you will have to continually invest on yourself, whether that is just so you can adequately perform your job duties or for your own personal growth. As you can see, just within the past few years, we've seen a big industry shift towards data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. Job openings that have Gen AI terms in the description have gone up 500% just within the past year. You might have done something completely different for your entire career and might have done that very well. But in order to continue that upward career trajectory, you will need to adapt to the new industry standards and how the market shifts. You don't have to completely switch your career track, but at least familiarize yourself or educate yourself on those things. This responsibility is yours. And sometimes if you have a busy work schedule, you might have to take this initiative of up leveling your skill set on your own time. Without that, you will start to hit a career plateau or worse may get laid off. If you're unsure on how to grow your skill set, check out some of my previous videos where I've shared my recommended books as well as free courses from some of the best universities. But if you want something with a bit more flexibility and a much larger catalog, try Educated. This is what I personally use as well. Whether you're trying to get better at distributed systems or machine learning, or just interested in leveling up on any other area, Educative will have a skill path or a course for you. This video is not sponsored by Educative. I'm recommending them to you because I have been using them for past four years now, and I generally think that they are one of the best software engineering education platforms out there when it comes to value for your time and money. And if you like what you see, you can always visit educative.io slash engineering with Utsu up, that will give you 10% off your subscription. But regardless of what you use, books, free courses, or paid platforms like Educative, or something entirely different, the important point here is to continually invest on yourself so that your career can also continue to progress upwards. 
We all get complacent at some point in our career. I think it's natural to feel comfortable with something after you've done it for a long time. However, complacency is usually the start of the decline of your career. If your job feels too easy in relation to the paycheck you receive, then you have most likely stopped stepping outside your comfort zone. True learning and growth happens just outside your comfort zone. So it's very important to push yourself beyond that boundary and get comfortable with the idea of being uncomfortable. Don't just take projects that are easy. Push yourself. As I mentioned previously, don't wait for everything to be fleshed out by somebody else. Have a bias for action. Back in 2020, when I considered starting a YouTube channel, I had a huge fear of the camera. I also kept questioning myself, why would anyone listen to me or what I have to say? But if I had not overcome those fears, I wouldn't have this channel with almost 200,000 subscribers today. That was literally me stepping way out of my comfort zone and having a bias for action. I did not have many answers and I had a lot of doubts, but I chose to publish the videos and take it one video at a time. And well, rest is history. So I highly encourage you to stay outside your comfort zone. People will notice that you go above and beyond and in a good system, you will get rewarded for it. But outside of just career returns, spending time outside your comfort zone can be extremely helpful in improving your confidence as well as your intuition on how to deal with the unknowns. I remember the pride I felt when my title changed from Software Engineer 1 to Software Engineer 2. The first thing I did was update my LinkedIn profile. But after working in various different companies, starting my own companies and spending a long time within the system, I've come to realize that titles don't mean much. Getting promoted is a recognition of your hard work. So by all means, you should be happy and proud. But what I'm saying is it is instinctive for us to focus more on the title. The issue with that is that titles vary by company. A senior in one company could be only level three in another company or a principal or a staff in some other company. Titles aren't standardized. So getting bogged down on that hurts you more than it helps you. Your career isn't tied to a title at a company. Your career is the sum total of all your experiences. So focus more on learning, growth, and marketability. How valuable is your skill set in the current job market? How do you rate your own expertise in the space? That matters way more. You could end up in a niche team working on proprietary technologies and still climb your way up that ladder, but that would not mean much unless that skill set transfers to the overall technology space. If you haven't already, check out this other video where I share the 10 most valuable software engineering lessons I've learned. Or if this video gave you motivation to invest in your personal growth, check out my top book recommendations for 2024. Please like the video if you found it useful and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, consider subscribing for more videos aimed at helping you holistically grow your software engineering career. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.